Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in for the channel. I want to thank every single one of you, new members and returning members alike, uh, for, for the love and support because it's because of you guys that I have, have found my passion again. I am motivated. I'm going to be consistent content grinding. And tomorrow, October 7, 6 p.m. EST, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero launches. For those of you who ordered the Ultimate and the Deluxe Edition, um, yo, I'm excited for you guys. Let me know what you guys think because, yeah, Monday I will be posting a video out. It's going to be late because obviously Spark and Joe comes out at 6 p.m. EST. For those of you who have the Standard Edition, go in the comment section below. I will post my Twitch link there for my channel. Give me a follow. I'm going to be streaming every day consistently. And, uh, yeah, I would appreciate the love and support, guys. Now let's get straight to the point of the video. Let's talk about my expectation of the vid. Uh, sorry, in the game, Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, and then you tell me what are your expectations and then whether or not you think it's gonna meet it on Monday. So for me, I think so far that everything we've seen in the trailer, all the gameplay uh, showcases from big streamers out there who that Bandai invited them to play for each different build has met my expectations. They put a lot of work throughout the years to make this game get to the point that it is now. They did final touches, they got feedback from the fans, and they continue to polish that game. To me, that is an amazing sign. It's such a great sign to see because you have devs who cared about the game, especially with Toriyama's passing. Obviously, they're going to want to live to the expectation that the fans are going to have. And out of respect and the love for Toriyama, they want this game to be extremely successful. As far as the story mode, as far as the what if scenario, I'm curious how the what if scenario is going to play out. I wonder if it's going to have its own mode. I think one of the Tenkaichi game had its own what if mode. I think it did. Or will Spark and Zero take a different route where we play that story mode? It's going to be that only mode, but it gives us the option to make that choice. Whether when you make that, when you, I think you're ending the chapter or there's like a big scene coming up. You have that choice to either follow the original storyline or you deviate away from that and take a different route. Take a different route. It becomes a what if story, right? I'm curious how that's going to play out. But regardless of what it is, if it's on a separate mode or in the same mode and given that ability to make that choice, I think it's going to do just fine. Now, as far as the custom battle, I think that was the most selling point for this game because they have the ability whether you're a content creator or not, we are all we're all creative with our ideas, right? We all have some kind of form of idea of how we want to build our own arc, tell our own story. And for the first time in history, we're going to have the ability to create those kind of arcs and create our own storylines. And I'm excited to see what kind of story you guys are going to tell. I'm excited to see what you guys' reaction is going to be when I tell my stories in Dragon Ball Spark and Zero. So I think that's a huge W that the fact that they're given that the ability to have that kind of control. Now, as far as playing the game and playing the mode, we're going to get a better understanding on how much control that we have. I know that it gave us information on the custom battle. So before anybody in the comments, a books on, they actually just say what we can do. I think it's a different kind of experience when you get the game in hand and you're actually able to get into the custom mode, and actually, you know, navigate around the menu to see what you can you do and what you can't do. There might be some stuff that they didn't tell us that we're going to find out. Now, for the last portion that I want to cover is the online gaming component, right? I think PvP is going to excel. It's going to be very, very successful. I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun. Um, however, this is the thing that I want everyone to expect. There is a possibility that the online servers may not be handled below the workload of how many users are coming and logging in playing the PvP mode. I'm not going to play PvP off the rip because I want to get used to the mechanic of the game. I want to hone my skills. But those of you who want to play PvP off the rip because you guys have been practicing, uh, it's a possibility that it's going to be some kind of connectivity issue. So try to play the story mode if you're going to have connectivity issues because usually a game like this that sells out, you're going to have some kind of issues. Unless... They've been prepared and they created some, they added more servers by anticipating, hey, we're going to need to be able to handle this workload of traffic that's coming into our server so that doesn't cause an outage because it can happen, it can cause some kind of downtime. But 
uh, to talk more on to the online component is to speak of crossplay. I did address the crossplay future of the game on my previous video. This is going to be a little different direction take. Uh, crossplay is going to be an interesting thing of how it's going to play out for when the game launches, for the especially with the PvP component. Because right now, PlayStation is going to be versus going to versus other PlayStation users. Um, what else? Xbox are only going to face other Xbox users in the same thing with PC, vice versa, right? So, if they add that feature, they add crossplay, because Xenoverse has it. Uh, but I think Xenoverse, they weren't plagued with hackers, but they did come across some hackers in PvP, which is an issue, right? So, let's not ruin the experience for console users. So, let's have inter crossplay where you have Xbox versus PC. Sorry. Let me correct that. Xbox versus PlayStation. And then that would be a great, that would be great content because you can have other creators out there, including myself, get like, who has more skills? Who is the better, you know, the better player base? Xbox or PlayStation? You know, that rivalry, that console rival? Oh my goodness. That would be a thing to talk about. So yeah, so if crossplay comes in, that's where I want to go. I don't, I don't, I think PC should be separate at all costs. And if it's no crossplay, then they're then okay, we're all separate. But if you're gonna introduce that, PC should be its own. It should not be included. I'm sorry, PC users, if you're not gonna be happy with me saying that. I'm really, really sorry about that. But I do think I'm sorry, guys. But I do think console just stick with console. So yeah, that's my thoughts on my initial thoughts on my expectation of the game. Let me know in the comment section below what your expectations are. Do you think it's gonna meet it? Do you think it's you know you're 50 50 on it, or you think it's gonna disappoint you? And let me know what you think about crossplay. Uh, also tell me how excited you are with custom battle, and if you have already drawn up a storyboard of what you want to do in creating your arcs. I'm excited to see you guys' responses. Hope you guys have a great night. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on my Twitch channel while I stream at 6 p.m. Monday EST, all right, October 7th. Remember that, guys. If you don't have the deluxe edition, the ultimate edition, and you think financially it will impact you if you upgrade, just come to my stream and just chill with me. And, uh, yeah, we'll join Dragon Ball Spark and Zero together, you know. But have a good one, guys. Much love. Take care.